Hello! So if you're wondering what's on my face, <laughs> I've been Nick slimed. <laughs> Nickelodeon. <laughs> I was doing an event today, so I put the slime on my face because I thought that would be fun. And uh, it was good. It was, a, it was a lovely event. I had some people from other parts of the world came. Um, oddly enough, this is the way synchronicity works. I um, brought an uh, additional artist with me. She kind of lives far away. And asked her if she wanted to have me replace her because of the distance. She said no. Okay. And uh, she happens to be from, Nor uh, from Norway. And two of the guests came from Norway and they got to speak in their native tongue. And it was pretty cool. One was a little boy. One was his mother. And the little boy just was astonished that he's coming to the States to a Nickelodeon event that uh, was all paid for and he got face painted and someone in the face painting section could speak to him in his native tongue. <laughs> I mean, go figure, right? Oh my gosh. Oh, speaking of native tongue, oh my gosh. Okay. If you have followed me at all in these videos, you know that I do not predetermine what I'm going to speak on. And I'm not very good at storytelling, honestly. I don't, I'm not great at making things up. I'm good at improvising, but I'm not great at making things up or lying, basically. <laughs> and so I came into the studio. I said, okay, what are we going to talk about? And I go through my uh, list of uh, options to talk on. And I don't give it a look, uh, a thought. I go through the page. I ask, is it on this page? No. Is it on this page? No. Is it on this page? No. Is it on this page? Yes. And I move my hand down until I'm guided to stop. Where I stopped was tongue. Tongue. And until I told you the story out loud, I didn't, un I didn't get the relevance. Speaking the native tongue became a wonderful memory. And now we're talking about the tongue. Honestly. <laughs> I am constantly shocked and amazed at the synchronicity of things because I just don't think about them. I don't plan them. I don't attempt to plan them, right? That's not what synchronicity is. <sighs> okay, well. I'm really just hoping that this camera's in focus because for some reason it seems to not be in focus. <laughs> Oh, speaking about the tongue. Uh, the tongue is pound per pound for, per square inch, the strongest muscle in the human body. I'm guessing in all mammals, it's the strongest muscle because again, it is the first that first muscle that has to work in order to thrive because it instigates the um, suckling reflex, uh, requirement for nutrition and the swallowing in its functionality. So it helps um, draw uh, the nutrients from the mother, right? So it's the first to get developed. So it's the first, it's the strongest in, in a natural state. And um, so that's, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty massive organ, <laughs> which I don't think we really stopped to look at it. It's pretty cool. Actually attaches here under the chin. So it kind of loops around and, and gets based, uh, which is why it can retract and protract pretty, pretty nicely. And clearly Gene Simmons has guided us to recognize that not everybody has the same dynamic tongue as other people. Some people have more. <laughs> um, so the tongue and its functionality obviously has to, um, has to help us uh, survive first of all, uh, through eating. And, um, it's quite a palpatory, um, muscle 
because it has so many nerve endings, right? It can palpate. You know, you can tell when something's like on your tooth by your tongue, right? And you can train your tongue to be just as sensitive by giving it sensitivity exercises. So for whatever reason, if that's interesting to you, um, your tongue can be quite sensitive. It also has the capacity for our taste. So uh, sweet, um, sour, bitter, and salty, right? Those are our main, main taste buds. And again, everybody's slightly different. Um, the males in my house particularly love, like a lot more salt than the women. <laughs> um, and there are um, many systems outside of Western tradition medicine that look at the tongue as a way of detecting what's going on in the interior. The Chinese systems have uh, tongue mapping. Uh, Ayurvedics have tongue mapping. Um, I don't know that much about the Ayurvedics, although that mapping system tends to be more um, shape color <sighs> in my basic understanding of it. Um, the Chinese system has like location specific. So the tip of your tongue is your heart, right? They have some very specific organs uh, and organ pairing that they look at in their system. So I know a little bit more about it because I, I was in acupuncture school for a wee bit. And it was one of the primary things we were uh, initiated in learning. So the tongue and then the lungs are behind that. The spleen and stomach are kind of right in the middle. Uh, behind that are the kidney, the bladder, and the intestines. And onto the side is liver and gallbladder. So how they use that, and then they also have just the general pallor of the tongue. And um, like the, sh the shape of it. So, I'm sorry, that was a fly. <laughs> um, so, if there is an issue on the tongue in a particular location, it kind of guides them to investigate more in that area. So, if there's a crack in the heart area, um, they look at that. And it's quite interesting. Um, they'll look at also the, um, the thickness, the color... Um, there was a lot of time when I was in school where my tongue was, um, very wet and I had ridges on the side and that tended to be, um, uh, splinchy deficient, um, and dampness, uh, dampness usually tends to do with having like too much sugar based diet kind of thing. Um, so basically to get it, the tongue is a way to uh, see balance, right? So that's really what we're always looking for is what's balanced and what's out of balance and what, whatever's out of balance, we have to figure out a way to balance it out. So the tongue is a pretty cool system to, um, to, to be able to recognize that. And I, I really wish it would be indicated a little bit more as a diagnostic tool in the Western culture. Uh, I think it would be really, really cool. I know that when I was um, with my client who was um, dying of cancer, the, his couple of things. One is that chemo really strips the bloody hell out of the tongue. <laughs> and, you you know, you it's not uncommon to hear that people coming out of chemo absolutely have no taste for anything, right? Um... And then uh, the, the, the look of the tongue can be extremely dry. Uh, medication can extremely dry out the tongue. And the pallor of the tongue can be a little gray-ish uh, in hue. So, yeah. So, that's that. Uh, so, you know, you could play and um, eat something that... Um, that you really, really like and see how it activates what part of the tongue. You can um, see if different uh, spices, spicy, sweet, uh, sour, bitter, um, activate a certain part of your tongue. 
It's kind of a game. <laughs> Uh, the interesting thing is, as far as taste buds, so you have a balance of taste buds, right? So you have um, sweet and bitter, and then you have the sour and salty, right? So why pickles just taste so darn good? Um, however, if you are trying to rid yourself of craving more sweets, have more bitter food that tends to counterbalance the out of balance nature of um, sweet craving. If you are craving way too much salt, then have more sour stuff. Let's see how that helps. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's the functional side. There's lots of things that uh, can happen on the tongue. Um, and people do get mouth cancers, it's typically from substance um, abuse, uh, smoking, etc. Uh, pipe, cigar, uh, cigars, pipe, things like that. Because that to the toxins really just kind of revolve in the mouth. Uh, uh, canker sores is an indication of being out of balance. Uh, and they typically arrive during high stress times. And typically there's an out of balance quality in your uh, at vitamins between vitamin C and vitamin B, which makes sense if you're stressed. B and um, C's do not typically stay in the body. They have to be constantly replenished. And when you're stressed, you use those qualities up faster. And so um, the pH of the mouth just funks out and you get canker sore. Um, so having also an out of balance of citrus can cause that um, problem as well. Um, I know asking for vitamin C and saying too much citrus, but really more like orange juice things in the mouth you just want to stay away from. Okay. Uh, right. So I think that handles the physical stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if there starts uh, beginnings of tongue problems as far as movement, taste, dis uh, discernment, uh, swallowing, then there's an indicator that something neurologic is happening and you definitely want to get it checked out. Okay? You can start by um, getting your jaw adjusted. You can start by getting your neck looked at. Um, there are some maneuvers to relax the tongue uh, the, because it is a muscle it can have tension, right? So there are definitely those um, techniques I have done and they're very interesting. And yeah, okay. So then we're going to move on to the emotional, symbolic, spiritual part of the tongue. So the tongue can carry belief systems such as uh, I have to hold my tongue uh, or the opposite, which is I refuse to hold my tongue and I have to speak, speak out, right? They can both be out of balance. Um, they can cause problems by not having filters uh, of, of control or release. You know, back in the day they would say he speaks with a forked tongue, right? That means you can't trust him. The tongue uh, belief systems symbology can also have to do with um, tasting the sweetness of life. I'm not worth tasting the sweetness in my life. My life um, is um hmm, let me see i just heard something i'm trying to i'm trying to hear what it was <sighs> the sweetness of life um uh i am unable to taste the sweetness in life or the variety of life i'm kept from it um 
and the things things that would be of restriction, right? So these mindsets can keep the tongue in tension, can also keep the tongue from really tasting and feeling as sens sensitive as it can. A lot of... Oh, physiology, thank you. A lot of what happens in the tongue is that it... So it's, it's the initiator of the gastric juices, right? So first you think about food. And that gets the gastric juices going. And then you eat the food. And the saliva gets the enzymes started. And gets the stomach juices started. And then, right, and it's, it's your first line of defense also for any um, uh, toxins that may be on the food. Because your parotid glands throw out some of the um, unnecessary things to break uh, bacteria down and whatnot. And so it's really important to actually keep the food in your mouth longer than we do. We typically just bite and swallow. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Um, so your belief systems about your, that it may be held in your tongue could also create some of these problems of taste, lack of taste. Definitely holding your tongue around any resentments, holding your tongue around any worth uh, that you feel about yourself. Being, you know, if you were in an environment where when you spoke your word, when you spoke your feelings, there was a repercussion for it, you're going to learn to hold your tongue. Okay? And that kind of initial oral investigation is uh, is then hampered, right, um, due to the response in the environment. So the tongue is a pretty good environment responder and will learn patterns of excessive control or dysfunction or whatever. It's a sensory organ, right? So if you were not able to speak when you were um, younger because of your environment, likely you had other senses that got heightened. Um, so, yeah. So it's really about wanting to get back into balance, as we really talk about all the time, I think, uh, in, in, finding, in finding some sort of homeostasis. And everybody's homeostasis is slightly different. So pay attention to the foods that you're drawn to. If you want to uh, create more balance, then go to its opposite and force yourself to go to its opposite. But in its really like truest form. Um, there were times when I would just eat raw greens, not cooked, nothing, right? Just to just to get that um, just to get that uh, change in the chemistry, right? Because it. So much of your senses uh, of taste are also from your nose and then also from your eyes. <laughs> you know, you look at chocolate, you can start salivating, right? Or you, for me, I'm Pavlovian. You say uh, sushi or Indian food, I gotta go. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> I'm finding some restaurant somewhere. <laughs> so... For some people, it's coffee. For some people, you know, that's kind of bitter. Uh, yeah. So, and pay attention. You know, if you're going through a detox, if you're doing any of these shifts that, that we're talking about in these videos, you're going to, you can see what's going on in your body through your tongue. It's pretty cool. And there are, um, you know, there are maps on the internet that you can print out. And every morning when you wake up, just look at your tongue, you know, stick it out. Uh, <laughs> go look at the chart and go, hmm, okay, what's going on right now? Just because it's different. It gives you a different insight that you maybe have not paid attention to. Okay? Some people just have really cool draws to, to different things anyway. They're just opening. We're just opening doors here. Okay? So, that's the tongue. And... I hope that you uh, find your balance in your usage of your tongue. There are times when holding your tongue is actually 
a good thing. <laughs> so, um, you know, you can be, uh, you can have a bitter tongue, right? Uh, which means that your mood is bitter, um, fire, right? Spitting fire kind of thing. That means you're hot and ready, <laughs> ready for some massive damage somewhere. <laughs> so likely that little heart around the tip is going to be red. <laughs> okay. Or the sides because the liver is just burning up. All right. Can be lots of fun. You know, we're, we're here to learn, explore, and enjoy, right? I love the body. Uh, everything it has to teach us and show us and share with us. And I hope you enjoy some of the information that came in today. And I'll see you again. Be well.